Waiting involves nurturing the moment as a mother nurtures a child that is growing in her womb. While patient people dare to stay where they are, believing that what they are waiting for will soon manifest, it is against this backdrop that I welcome you to Let's Talk on DNC Walk. My name is Oluja Kemosaku with the topic, The Person in Waiting. And my guest is Dr. Matilda Abimbola Abiola, Senior Pastor, Christ Life Bible Church, New York. But before we delve into the program proper, I'd like to remind you to please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on all of our social media platforms. It's actually a way of you supporting us. Until then, let's try right on with the topic and I hope and pray that you will actually get something out of it. Please stay with us. Thank you so much, Dr. Abiola, for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Yes. Now, the topic is the person in waiting. How would you explain waiting as an everyday word? Well, thank you so much, Sister Joke, for having me. God bless you abundantly. Mm -hmm. um, to answer your question, I would put waiting, simply put as a period of being put on hold. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Humanly speaking, nobody likes, you know, to be put on hold or nobody likes to wait. There are times that, you know, you can imagine people that are queuing and all of a sudden they say, it's your turn, it's your turn, it's your turn, it's your turn. And when it's about getting to you, they're like, you stay here, wait. You know, you want to be impatient, you don't want to do it. But let me go as a believer to one aspect that really touched me, and that is, to me, waiting period is a hard time. Is waiting is hard work. Let me simply put it that way: that waiting is hard work, and um, a lot of people, when is is a waiting period, what you do at the waiting period matters a lot. And I want to define waiting period for Christians that will be listening on TV as when God puts you on hold or when God closes the door onto you and um, humanly speaking what you want to do is that you want to force the door open or you want to force yourself out of being put on hold but when god puts you on hold it's a time to stay there until you see the salvation of the lord i'm saying it's a time to stand still until god opens the door you remember in this, in genesis chapter 6 i believe when there was flood and god put noah and his people in the ark if they had forced themselves they will have entered into destruction too, but they waited until God opened the door for them. Hmm. That's really a powerful one. Now, waiting comes with different aspects to eat, to eat, actually. It could either be a royal, um, royal position or leadership position. But on the show today, we will be focusing on the spiritual or, the, uh, if I would say, religious in quote kind of way. So let's get um, right in and um, help us out with this uh, particular issue. Well, different, there are so many aspects to waiting. Let me talk about people that are waiting even in leadership to get into royal position. I've come to realize that it is God that puts people on the throne. It's God that puts you in leadership. And if God is in, is in charge of all these things and is the one orchestrating it, then the best thing is to wait on him until your wait is over. And another aspect I want to talk about, there are women that are waiting for the fruit of the womb. And personally, I can testify for years, close to two decades, I was believing God for the fruit of the womb. I waited. And uh, I can tell you that I may, you know, I can testify to the faithfulness of God. It does not matter what you are passing through, God will come through. Or probably you are waiting on God for a husband. You know what? God will come through for you. And another thing is what you do during the waiting period matters. But let me just jump in this way again. There are people that are even waiting to get into colleges, to get admission into universities. There are people waiting for a job. You know, you have. You went to school, you are believing God for job and, and it's not forthcoming. You want employment and it's not forthcoming. But I want to assure you, God has what it takes. You know what? 
to put you through. It has what it takes to open the door at the appointed time. Mm. Okay, so what are the now while you were talking actually? Um, this popped into my mind, and I would like to say it. How long, especially, can people wait, especially when it seems it's not going to happen? I feel that talking about how long will people wait, especially when it feels it's not going to happen. I'm somebody that believes it's not over until it is over. So I cannot, while I'm not going to put a time frame, I, I believe that what you do in your waiting period is what matters. And I want to say something here. Waiting period, many a times, you know, God will come through. And I'm someone that believes that there's nothing God cannot do. What God cannot do does not exist. So God can do all things. God can do all things. It's a God of possibility. He can do all things. But there are times that what you are focusing on, your ways may not be the ways of God. So even in waiting period, you need to understand and know the mind of God concerning that particular situation that you are waiting on the Lord for. For example, let me give this example that jumped to my mind. I've seen people believing God for a particular man as their spouse, you know, and Others will come and they keep saying, God has spoken to me. Is this one? And I'm waiting on this one. And this man is going out with somebody else. This man is moving on with his life. And you are there rejecting all the suitable spouse. You know, and at the end of it, the man will get married. And some people will carry it even into a stream. They will still be waiting after the man is married. Mm. And to me, at that particular time, I believe it's not God that has put the person on hold. You decided to put yourself on hold. You decided to put yourself in bondage. So we need to know that we need to work on the thin line between this is God putting me on hold. And anytime if it's God that puts you on hold, God is, is not coming late, it's coming big. Okay. Now, this uh, what you just said also, it's something I would want us to actually speak further on. Now, you said well, probably the person said God has uh, uh, spoken to him or her about a lady or a man. And uh, the person was in a relationship right there and then the person got married. Now, I, for me, I want to say that the person didn't really hear God. I would want you to correct me if I'm wrong. Because if God is talking to you, about a particular person, it wouldn't want. He knows it. It was. He saw everything that is happening, and you still were waiting for the person. That means you have your own intentions, not God's intentions. Maybe because you feel, oh, this is the kind of man for me, or something. I is that? Um, could you please help me on that, Mark? Well, I agree with you that um, if it's God, God has what it takes to bring it to pass. Mm -hmm. And um, I use that example because I know there are a lot of single ladies that, you know, out there that probably that was what has kept them on hold. And they keep saying they are waiting. For example, someone after the man got married, you are still waiting for the man to come. It's either, and God hates divorce. And I'm not, you know, a shout out to all the divorcees. I'm not condemning you. I'm just saying that it is not the will of God. Although I know there are times for whatever reason, it's happened and there's nothing anybody can do about it that, that it happened may not be your fault. And that's why I say a shout out to them. But, you know, it's either you are praying for them to divorce or you are praying for the person to die. To die. And to me, I feel that is witchcraft. So, that is ignorance. Even if you believe God has spoken after the person got married, at least, I believe God knows the person was not going to marry you because God is a God of all knowledge. And he's not a confused God too. So and he's he... not a confused God. Mm -hmm. And he knows all things. God is not an author of confusion. So after he got married, I believe you should just rest and begin to ask God for a new beginning. Probably you have heard wrongly. Probably it was initially you liked the person and that you got carried away. Because when it comes to marriage, many of God told me, God said, it's just simply because you love somebody, you like somebody, and 
you just get carried away. I know God still speaks in marriage. I know God still hooks people up. And I know that God is faithful to his word. Mm. Let's quickly go on this break. And when we come back, we continue from there. Please stay with us. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, the program is Let's Talk on the Empty Work. And I have been speaking with Dr. Matilda Abimbola Abiola. She is the senior pastor, Christ Life Bible Church, New York. And the topic has been the person in waiting. Before we went on that break, she gave us a scenario of somebody who says God told him or about a particular person. But right in front of, the, of her or him, the person was in a relationship and from that the person the, the person got married and you're still waiting well if we look at it i feel that's foolishness on the person's part but for the purpose of everyone that is actually watching let's just go right in thank you so much dr abiola for standing by it's nice having you once again thank you okay so what are the precedents to waiting or why do we um, why do we use the word waiting? I, I believe that um, the word waiting, is, like I said, is to be on hold or to take it easy or to slow down. And uh, I believe people use that because we use the word waiting. So many things could be, the, you know, could make us to use the word the person is waiting. And unfortunately, the society, they will come with their labels. A woman got married, especially from my own culture. If you're married one year after, people are looking at you. They are looking at your hand, looking at your womb, you know, looking at your stomach, looking at your face, at your leg. And they are wondering why there is no change for you as a woman. Already that has put them on the, that has put the person on the pressure. And uh, by the time you are going through that pressure, if care is not taken, you know, you will allow them to label you. And uh, when they label you, it becomes something that you begin to grumble, complain. But I believe that when that happens, that you feel things are happening for others and it's not happening for you as fast as, you know, you are thinking or as fast as people are looking at you to be or thinking that you should be. I believe it should be a time to go back to God. And not to look at human beings. Okay. So people can actually make one frustrated while waiting. Now, perhaps this person, because we've been speaking from the spiritual point of view, which is actually the focus, but I also want us to die, digress a little by looking at those who don't even believe, who don't even know that there is a God somewhere, or they're just living their life by precedence. People that don't believe that there is a God out there, I will start first of all and say that there is a God out there. But whatever you are passing through, I just want you to know that don't focus on your problem. Mm. Look at the expect, you know, look at the end result. Don't focus on your problem. If you focus on your problem, then it becomes a label, it becomes a problem. It's not a problem until you turn it into a problem. So if you learn not to focus on your problem, instead of focusing on your problem, look at the end result. Look at where you are going. Even if you believe that there is no God, there is no way you want to talk about waiting, that you will not link it to God. Because I believe it's people that wait upon God that, you know, that God will come through for. When you learn to wait upon God, it will come through for you. So there's no way I want to talk about waiting for, a, for something that, it will not come in even when it's not spiritual. 
that I will not still talk about God. Even if you don't believe in God, there is a hand that controls the world. And there is somebody that you believe that rules and reign upon the world. So at that particular time, don't focus on your problem. Focus on what you believe. Focus on your God, the one that has the power and the ability to do all things. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Don't focus on your problems. Focus on the on God. Now, for very true. People are waiting for different things, two of which we actually have mentioned. And um, from the look of things, they seem to be a big deal, and which is either spouse, getting married, or having babies. There are other things that people could be waiting for, employment, admission, People could be at home for like nine, ten years, waiting to just get into school. Some could, so many things that is not really that pronounced. Maybe at that time, you might not even term it as a spiritual problem or a delay. Well, maybe delay, but it's not really pronounced as babies and spouse. Why are these two things a big deal? And how would you explain that? I believe these two things are big deal because of the societal influence already like i said earlier the society kind of label the people and it depends on the culture where you are from and not only that every woman you know there's this joy of carrying your own baby there's this joy of having a baby and in our own society you know where let me just relate with that a little bit where i came from before got in here back home in nigeria where i came from your mother-in-law is looking for you to have your baby to, to carry your grand to, to carry a grandchild your own mom is looking to carry a home grandchild and you know before you know it you have friends getting married and having children after you you know people around them relations and instead of them you know to allow you to focus on issue even when you were not ready i remember when we first got married we were not ready to have children right away we wanted to serve god and we wanted to know each other we wanted to you know just to enjoy each other but the pressure was so much even at the end of two years that we felt hey i think we should not begin to think about having children and it, and, and the kids were not coming so I believe it's people or when you see a woman, I remember I was saying it the first time, I mean, when I got graduated from college and, you know, at the graduation party, one thing I noticed people were asking me. So every, you know, I was like, all my aunties, all their prayer was centered on God will give you a good husband. And I was like, what's the problem with them? And, you know, every guy that came for my graduation party was a, People were looking at us. When we smile like this, I ask, you see this one? When we when we hold hand, they are saying, you see this one? You know, when you sit down or when they are talking. And I've been a Christian by, you know, when I graduated. And so we were talking as Christians. We had fellowship. It wasn't a party, actually. It was just a fellowship and to pray. Incidentally, my husband was there. And all the guys, all the brothers that were there, people were asking, you see this one? You see that one? You see that one? And I have to say, they're just my brother from the church. So the pressure already, uh, and I remember when I went to youth service and I came back again, it was like, so who is the sort of, who is the guy? Who are you going out with? When is the date? And I'm like, how old am I? So it's, it's about the society. And anytime any guy should visit me in my house and my aunties are there, I'm in trouble because they will start asking me after so is that the guy is that the guy so already there's a pressure that makes people to feel by the time you are 24 and there's nobody you start thinking even if there's somebody and it's not really concrete you start thinking and wor worried because of the pressure that people have put you into but i want to tell you don't put allow them to put you under pressure because pressure will lead to fear and there's nothing good that can come out of fear so it's only when you have faith and you believe that the plan of God for your life is going to come to pass. Because any time you are waiting is for a purpose. When God puts you on hold, it's for a purpose. I want us to get that. That is for a purpose. And that purpose will surely come to pass. The reason will come to pass. Because probably God has somebody better out there for you. If you're a single lady and you are waiting, God has somebody better out there for you. That you just need to shine your, you know, 
to shine your eyes and you begin to see. Or probably you are waiting for the fruit of the womb. God is waiting for the best time to give unto you so that by the time you have your baby, you'll be able to see the goodness of God and sing better. Mm. Thank you so much for that. Now, how then can the person in any of these um, categories of waiting be helped or advised without making him or her an object of mockery? You see, the something happened. Let me use this example in the first Samuel chapter one, the story of Anna and Penana. I, I believe that why the first woman Penana was busy having children. Up to tomorrow, I asked myself this question. Nobody knows the name of Penana. Mm -hmm. of, of Penana's children. Nobody knows their name. But everybody knows Samuel. When you mention Samuel, people will willingly, they will just tell you, oh, that is the son of Hannah. And now, you know, a promising child. So you can imagine when Penana was busy mocking her. And there are so many things that could, you know, there are so many ways people could mock you. It may not be the other woman in your own case. It may be your friends that are mocking you. You know, probably it, it may not be your friends. It may be families that are mocking you. It may be anybody that are mocking you. They want to rub it in your face. But the best way for you to hold on to God the first thing I will tell you is don't focus on that problem. Shift away from the mockers. And don't focus on your problem. Focus on your goal. That's the first step. And not only that, another thing is don't allow fear to come in. Fear will rob you of your blessing. But faith and trust in God will give you your blessing. Fear will rob you of holding on to God. And when you lose faith with God, you cannot receive any or anything again except for the mercy of God. So the way to help you is that I will tell you, be expectant. Know that. And, and during that time, allow joy to fill your heart. Don't allow the situation to audio i remember when i got married you know my friends would tease each other and some of them would tell me oh we want to tell you something now but the difference is clear I, but now we know you are too we don't want you to go and tell your husband i would tease them i said okay you are still safe with me but the difference is clear and i will show my rings and we will laugh but you know it's just a way to make them to laugh and we were praying together. We were believing God for their spouses together. And as they were coming, we were rejoicing together. You know, we were thanking God together. And as they were getting married, they were having children. So the fact that the person went ahead of you does not mean that you're still going to be the last. Mm. Mm. That's true. So during that time, don't allow the, the enemy to rob you of your joy. I believe the things that you do at that time matters a lot. Always be expectant and have good, you know, believe in yourself that God will not leave you nor forsake you. So when you have all those beliefs that, okay, I know that whatever that is coming my way, there is nothing coming that God cannot take. Then you will go to God in prayer. And when you go to God in prayer, what do you do? You pray, you praise God, you fill yourself with joy. And when you come up, be joyful, be joyous. Look unto, you know, believe that God has answered. Even when it appears, you are not seeing anything. After Anna went to pray, the Bible said that she came out and her curtain and changed so many are times when we even after you have prayed after you have talked to god your countenance is still the same you still look wretched and that is why the mockers are still there to mock you but if they see you happy there's nothing they can do about it i remember after my first year anniversary wedding anniversary and, and we decided to just call friends and rejoice and celebrate you know somebody carelessly says something he said oh I was talking to somebody that I'm going for your wedding anniversary celebration and the person said, what is there to rejoice about? This is just one year. What? But do you know that could weigh me down? I just say, I'm rejoicing at the faithfulness of God that kept me with this man. Mm. So always find something to rejoice. And it was a time for us, for me and my husband, it was a time that we bonded. It, it was a time that we got close we, uh, and that have been, you know, it's just my best friend and we have been very close. And people that are waiting for husband or for a wife out there, I want to tell you something. Marry your friend. I don't care 
who spoke to you or who has not spoken but don't, god will not give you an enemy as a husband or as a wife marry your friend things may not look the way that you plan it but if you are friends you and you believe you have the same faith you can pull together and then another way to help the people that are waiting for something is that look for people of like mind many a times you you know when you go around the people that don't believe in you people that are mocking you people that always mess you people that make you to feel dejected to feel down to feel sorry for yourself you see there are some professional mockers there are some professional sympathizers and there are some you know professional mockers out there don't go around them and so that they will not make you to feel dejected to feel sorry for yourself just surround yourself with people that can make you to be joyful and always don't allow anybody to rob you of your joy mm. thank you so so much for that it's actually um a very wonderful time with you for me it's really a wonderful time and i hope that people out there too um really are able to get something out of it it's indeed um something we need to actually pay attention to thank you so much dr Abiola for coming on the show. It's indeed a great privilege for me to have you here, ma'am. Thank you once again. Thank you. Yes. Um, so to you out there, I hope you've been able to really, really key into this discussion. And if you're in any of these categories, like she said, the fact that someone has gone ahead of you doesn't mean that you are the last or you will always be at the last the, the last will be surely, sometimes the last will be the first. And there is no late comma in anywhere. It's just your timing and God is timeless. So if you believe in that, you will just keep moving and keep pushing because your miracle is so close by. Until next time, I remain with your Kamsako. Bye for now. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas.